Hello everyone and welcome to my Emmerdale News YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. Bell Dingle was scared of what Tom King and Emmerdale may do after making a discovery at Dale Head. Soon after Bell's family discovered that Tom had been assaulting her for months on end, he vanished from the area. Tom packed up his belongings and fled, not wanting to be discovered. He hasn't been seen since. Tom began seeing young Amelia Spencer before leaving with the intention of making Bell envious. But instead of bringing Amelia back to him, Tom watched in dismay as Bell tried to expose his true nature. In tonight's ITV soap opera episode, Bell was discovered by Lydia outside Dale Head. She disclosed that Kim's real estate agent had told her the property is a total disaster. Bell knew that her former house was immaculate when she left, which implied that Tom had broken in and done some damage. Lydia noticed a wire on the floor as soon as they walked in. She picked it up and grew inquisitive, but Bell very quickly saw a little camera attached to it. Bell was alarmed to see that Tom had been observing her once more, and she surmised that Tom had likely dropped the wire while leaving. Lydia informed Bell that they would be bringing the camera to the police as proof and that she should go back to wishing well so that her family could support her. Bell will consider whether or not to go back to the police with information regarding Tom later on in the week. She will eventually understand that this is the only way to prevent Tom from abusing Amelia and others in the same way. She goes up to Lydia and asks her about her experience of reporting Craig. It's a lot to ask of Lydia, who finds it difficult to relive the horror. But she does it for Belle in the hopes that it would aid in her decision-making. After talking about their challenging day, the two get closer, and Lydia hopes Belle has been inspired to submit the report. Amelia appears to have realized how nasty Tom is, which is the next positive step. She sets up a private meeting, which Belle is happy to accept. Is it all a trap, though? Bell watches in horror as Tom calmly lets himself in, blocks the door, and locks it while she waits for Amelia to arrive at the Dingles. There is no way out of Bell's situation. What would Tom, who has nothing to lose, do now that he has her all to himself? Though Emmerdale viewers think John Subden might not be a Subden after all, they also think he's not the genuine Aiden Moore, adding to the intrigue around him. In August 2024, Oliver Farnworth made waves in the ITV Hamlet as the enigmatic newcomer. In a scene that brought back memories of Aaron Dingle's relationship with John's brother Robert Sugden, viewers saw Farnworth's on-screen alter ego romping with Dingle. Since then, John has made an effort to avoid his half-sister Victoria Sugden, Isabel Hodgins, but this Monday's, September 23, 2024. Episode of the Yorkshire-based show featured more of her bothersome inquiries and unsolicited glimpses into his private life. John was irritated with her actions, but he maintained his composure until Victoria dug through his van's things and discovered tags bearing Aidan Moore's name. John lost his temper, grabbed the things from her, and said he wished he had never met her. In recent weeks, there have been infrequent mentions of Aidan Moore's name, since fans of the long-running drama are certain that is the genuine name of John Sugden. Although many still doubt John's identity and maintain he cannot be Victoria's relative, supporters think Aidan may be John's ex-partner, who may have passed away. One admirer posted on Twitter, now X, saying, John needs to admit he's not really a Subden, because even if he is, why would you want to be related to Victoria? A different individual responded, so fake John is he going to contact real John at some point or visit his grave? I don't think John is a Subden, a third person said, echoing the words of another, are the tags his or his ex-partners and he's pretending to be John Subden? Wouldn't all of a John's stuff have been virtually destroyed when his van was submerged in the river all looks in remarkably fine fettle considering, questioned a last viewer, casting doubt on John's account. Though John Sugden has so far played it safe, a lot of hypotheses about him have surfaced online as fans have been lead to believe that he is hiding a significant secret from everyone in the village of the same name. Who could John truly be if he is neither Aiden Moore nor who he claims to be? Whatever the outcome, there has been speculation that John might serve as a catalyst for Robert Sugden's comeback to Emmerdale, given that years after his departure from the show, Ryan Hawley was able to land a new TV job on Casualty. How do you feel about John Sugden? Though I kind of like him, I'm interested to see Aaron's reaction when he finds out that John Sugden, Victoria's brother, is truly his date. Recall that Robert was a Sugden as well. Hashtag Emmerdale, one observer wrote on X. Still another said, OMG so messy. 
Another person shouted, John said, wondering when you would shut up, it sounded like Robert. Still another said, this better be leading up to Robert's return or you better count your days. Fans of Emmerdale are glued to the show, piecing together hints and speculating about when Caleb Milligan's mysterious daughter Stephanie will appear in the village. It appears that Stephanie will pass away soon. The villagers were shocked to learn in a recent revelation that Caleb is not only Ruby's partner but also has a daughter named Stephanie. We were fully aware that Nicky Milligan, the son of Caleb and Ruby, had absconded from the Dale along with his bow, but the secret is now out, Stephanie is Caleb's new sprog. When Caleb went to the hospital to meet Ruby's mother Helen, who was near death, the secret was revealed Ruby and her mother Helen had a strained relationship due of Ruby's involvement with her husband Caleb. According to Leeds Live, Caleb attempted to get Helen to give him some dough at the hospital so she could see her daughter one final time before she got stoned. Helen took the bait, giving a substantial £100,000 and subtly bringing up Caleb's girlfriend Steph, who he didn't really care for. Concerned Helen inquired as to if he had laid eyes on Stephanie. Don't you dare say my kids' names, spit out Caleb in a grumpy manner. In Wednesday's heartbreaking scene, just 20 minutes before Ruby arrived at the ward, poor Ruby receives the news that her elderly mother had fallen out of her shoes. Ruby was devastated when she returned to her room and told Caleb that she would never believe what her mother had wanted to tell her. Caleb did a fantastic job of seeming astonished. Fans are now making assumptions regarding Stephanie's entrance in the Dales after learning of her father, Caleb. Many who follow her on social media are certain that she will make her public debut during Helen's funeral. Point one fan said the following on a Facebook fan page for Emmerdale, Steph will probably be at the funeral and see Caleb and Ruby. A different person responded, well that's Caleb's daughter making her first appearance at the funeral then. Probably how she arrives, do we think she's Ruby's though? A third admirer asked in a comment. Oliver Farnworth from Emmerdale is learning as much as he can from his partner, Samantha Womack, an EastEnders icon who portrayed Ronnie Mitchell for 10 years. Oliver gains a great deal of insight into the soap opera industry from the pair, who have been together for three years. Oliver calls the enigmatic John Sugden, Victoria Sugden's recently found half-brother, who is currently stirring things up in Emmerdale, a lone wolf. When he's not working, he enjoys living in Spain with Samantha and has forged strong relationships with both of her kids, Lily and Benjamin, and their father, Mark Womack, who used to be Samantha's ex-husband and an Emmerdale star. Speaking well of Mark, Oliver has said, Mark is a good friend, and he has recalled advice from Mark when he joined the soap opera, Mark told me it was a great job when I got the part. He was gushing about the location. Oliver has experience in soap operas before to joining Emmerdale. He had portrayed Andy Carver on Coronation Street, where his character tragically lost both of his lives at the hands of villain Pat Phelan. Oliver was quoted as saying, I got to die twice at the hands of Pat Phelan which is a badge of honor, by the mirror. Leeds Live states that in a compelling 2022 plot, ITV viewers were made to think that Pat, Connor McIntyre, had murdered Andy, only to find out later that he had been held captive in a cellar. Oliver Farnworth recently talked about his surreptitious arrival for covert filming on the Coronation Street set. The actor told ITVs this morning, a lot of people thought I was rolled up in the carpet but that was him disposing of the carpet because it had my blood and DNA and things on it, but you never saw a body and that is something that has baffled quite a lot of people. Later, in a dramatic turn of events, Pat Phelan tragically killed Oliver's character, Andy Carver, after forcing him to kill Vinnie Ashford. Oliver's reputation as a soap opera star was well established before to his Corey's day. He played Will Hackett in the Channel 4 series Hollyoaks, his first role after drama school, his acting credits go beyond soap operas, he won praise for his performance in the stage version of The Girl on the Train, when he first connected with Samantha. He was also a guest star on Mr. Selfridge, an ITV historical drama. Samantha, an actress, boldly recounted her experience with breast cancer last year. Oliver opened up to loose women about her battle with the condition, expressing appreciation for her resilience, she's been so kind of tough and determined through it. She had chemotherapy and radiation treatment after the rather high grade of cancer was promptly identified, which was extremely fortunate for us. While undergoing therapy, the actress, whose diagnosis was discovered during a regular checkup, kept wowing audiences in the West End production of The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe. Speaking about her experience with the illness, she remarked, it's pretty tiring, kind of like having to think and speak in a different language. 
everything has only a small color shift since you're not quite the same person you once were. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.